Welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. As I promised in my unboxing and first impressions video of Nikon's 50mm 1.4 Z-mount lens, this video is a review of that lens. So let's get started with the specifications. This lens has 10 elements in 7 groups. It weighs 14.9 ounces or 422 grams, just about the same weight as the 50 millimeter 1.8. It has nine aperture blades, takes 62 millimeter filters, and will focus as close as 14.5 inches or 37.19 centimeters. Now here's an image I shot at the closest focus distance of this ruler, and you can see from left to right, it will cover, at the minimum focus distance, 8 inches. This lens also has a rubberized focus ring, nice wide ring, and it has a customizable control ring. That ring could be programmed for ISO, exposure compensation, or for aperture. It also is shipped with Nikon's HB115 plastic pedal lens hood. Now this lens is also weather sealed and does have the rubber gasket at the lens mount. Now I tested this lens on my Nikon Z8 using matrix metering, aperture priority exposure, and autofocus for all images. And I use wide small AF area mode with face detect. Now the images were shot at Lynn Villa Orchard in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. And we went there with three of our nieces who you have seen many times in a lot of my images. So it was a nice, sunny Saturday afternoon. And there were a lot of people there. And the girls wanted to take a hayride, so we did that. And uh, these, this was just a young family seated there. This was at an eighth of a second. I didn't realize as it was moving, but I kind of liked the way the background looked. Now this image here was at 5.6, and a lot of pictures you're going to see here, I shot at 1.4, because as I've said many times, you buy a 1.4 lens to shoot it at 1.4, and I'm not only going to shoot it at 1.4, but uh, this one of this friendly witch was at 5.6, and then I went to 1.4, and of course I kept the focus box right on her face, and it focused right on the eye. Now here are my three nieces. And the focus was on the young lady on the right, and it focused right on her eye. And here is a crop version of that image to show you the bouquet. And I'm really pleased with the bouquet with this lens. Look at it, it's so smooth. And of course, I am a great distance from the background. Now, here is another one. Again, it was focused on her, on her eye. And here you could see the bouquet. So, in my title to this video, I said, Is this a bouquet master? And I think it might be. You know, need more evidence, I guess, in more situations, but I really like the bouquet on this lens. It's not a plena. I prefer the bouquet on the plena, but I really like the bouquet on this lens. Now, all these are at 1.4, and I will uh, let you know when I uh, went to a smaller aperture, but it was really bright in the background, as you can see here. And uh, here we look at the bouquet. And nice and smooth. There is some chromatic aberration. You can notice that on the branches of the tree. And here's another one of the girls. And uh, this one actually is at 5.6. And uh, so let's have a look at the bouquet at 5.6. And it, 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 it looks nice even at 5.6. You know, it's a nine bladed aperture. So it's not completely round, but it's close. So it gives you a nice look in the background. So this shot of the firewood and the sky was at F8, sharp edge to edge. So I kept the aperture at F8 and shot some of these people roasting marshmallows. And uh, this is the advantage of an autofocus lens, you know, to focus quickly when something's happening quickly with a manual focus lens, uh, you know, it's a little difficult. Now, if I were using a manual focus lens in this situation, I probably would be using a wide angle and just pre-focus and rely on the depth of field to keep everything sharp. So here's my niece 
And uh, she really did a job on this marshmallow. Uh, this is what you call a very well done roasted marshmallow. Now, in this image here, you could see the sun in the upper portion. And this lens has Nikon super integrated coating, but it doesn't have the nano crystal coat, which some of the more expensive Nikkor lenses have. So you wouldn't expect it to do this well, an image with the sun in the frame. So the contrast is still really good on my niece's face. Now, here we go back to uh, 1.4. And I love the look of this lens. It reminds me of more vintage 51.4s, although this is sharper. It just has that rendering. It just has that look. It's not the contrast isn't as high as some of the newer lenses. I don't know. I just like, it's hard to put your finger exactly what it is, but I really like the look of this lens. Now, here is her sister who was next to her and the sun was hitting her in the face. And then I, uh, this is still at 1.4 of both girls. And then I went to a smaller aperture. I went to F4 to try to keep them both in a, a little sharper focus. But the, the look of this lens, uh, Again, it doesn't have, you know, what some people call that clinical look of more modern lenses. It has a more vintage look, yet it is, I believe, sharper than the old 51.4 pre-AI. So here we have some firewood at F4. And again, really nicely sharp, pretty much edge to edge. And then I went to 5.6 again for a shot at his firewood. So the lens has very good sharpness yet it's still in parts at the wider apertures, uh, a more vintage look. So now I'm going back to 1.4 again, I, I, as, you, as I've said too much probably, that I really like shooting at wide apertures. That's something that I really didn't do back in the old days because it was hard to focus a lens at 1.4, especially on something that was moving a, a young child. So the autofocus really makes this lens usable for me at 1.4. So I intend on using this lens quite a bit at 1.4. And I'm very happy Nikon introduced this lens. The 51.2 is just uh, way too expensive. And I don't know that it's worth over $2,000, at least not for me. I'm sure for some people it is. So here's another at 1.4. And just love the look of this. And this is a shot I never could have got with a manual focus 1.4 lens. Forget about it. Never would have been in focus. So even back in the old days when my eyes were better. So here are the girls. We went on this little train ride. And um, this was at 6.3. And I had considered the 51.8. Well, that was one of the first lenses Nikon introduced when they introduced the Z mount cameras. But I held off because I really wanted a 51.4, and I got my first Nikon Z camera back in 2019. So it's over five years. That was early 2019. So the worth, the weight was worth it, I think, because uh, I really like this lens. And these shots here, the girls were at 5.6. You know, the contrast is really nice. You know, it's, this is a lot of strong light coming from behind. Now it was getting later in the day here. And I really wanted to test this lens with some action, with action coming towards me because I shoot high school basketball. So I had my niece start out running towards me. And I was at 5.6, 3200 ISO at 1 500th of a second, still using that wide, small AF area mode with face detect. And I was, of course, was using continuous autofocus at 10 frames a second and i shot off about 14 frames so figure about a second and a half as she was running towards me and i think it did rather well uh i don't think they're all razor sharp especially she got close but it's pretty good so the jury is still out you know if i'm going to be shooting basketball they're going to be running a lot quicker dribbling the ball down the court towards the basket uh, but I think it worked out pretty good, and uh, there's some distractions in the background, but I tried to keep that point right on her face, and uh, I think it was pretty successful. Now, I've used the 40 F2 for basketball, shooting it wide open, and that worked out well, 
And I also have used the 85 1.8, which was actually better. That focuses quicker than the 40 f2. So I'm going to try this lens at 1.4 and see how it compares to the 85. So I, um, I'm pleased with this lens. For the money, for under $500, I think it's a great little lens. It's a little bit cheaper than the 51.8. The 51.8 normally sells for about $630. Right now it's on sale. I believe it's uh, like 520. So this lens still is a little cheaper than that. And I think it's a good choice if you need a fast 50 and you don't want to spend a fortune on the 51.2. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I publish a new video every Monday morning and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I'd love to hear your comments or questions on anything in this video. And also, I will put a link to my recent video on the 50 millimeter 1.4 pre AI manual focus lens. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.